Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to go over the top five most profitable cars on Turo in 2023 if your budget is between $25,000 to $40,000. And this is based off of data that is actually provided by Turo based on the national average here in the United States. Now, this video is part two of a three-part series. My last video, we went over the top five most profitable cars if your budget was between $10,000 to $25,000, which you can catch right here. And then the next one will be sort of in the luxury range with $40,000 to $100,000 budget range. And we will break down the most profitable cars. Now, this is based on data provided by Turo. However, I must warn you that sometimes the numbers can be a little bit misleading based on how Turo has provided them. And so at the end of this video, I'm going to go over exactly what you need to be looking at with a fine tooth comb so that you don't end up into a situation where you look at this data and you're like, oh, this car is so profitable. But when you actually list it, the margins may not be what they seem. So let's dive in. Number five on the list if your budget is between $25,000 to $40,000 is a Honda Odyssey. Now it has a return on investment per year of 92.7% based on Turo, uh, Turo's data, and the average earnings per year are right around $13,000. To be exact, it's gonna be 12,782. Now they estimate that your annual cost on the vehicle is $6,635. And of course, a 92.7% return on investment does sound very enticing. Now, one trend we have have noticed and if you read through the comments on this channel over the last couple of years is that minivans have really really taken off on the platform and they are highly in demand which is why I was not surprised to see minivans on this list but it's always nice when you actually have the data to support it now number four on the list and I might say this wrong is the VW Taos this has an annualized return on investment of 96.7% with the average annual earnings being at $11,075 and the annual loan costs being $5,631. Now in a second, I am actually going to break down the payments per month and the profit per month. So you can kind of get an understanding of like, well, what does it actually mean in terms of how much money I'm going to make per month if I'm listing this car on the platform? But let's whiz through that list and then we'll kind of break down the math on it. Number three on the list, I've been seeing this car a lot on the platform and I'm kind of happy to see it on the list, which is a Ford Bronco Sport at an annualized return on investment of 98.2%. Now they estimate that the average earnings per year are $13,244 and your cost of the loan, if you are financing it at a 60 month term at an eight and a half percent interest rate, which is not so accurate, I'm gonna go over that that is going to be about $6,683. Now, the number two car on the list is a Subaru Ascent with 107.7% annualized return on investment. Your average earnings per year are going to be $13,189 and your annual loan cost is going to be $6,351. So of course, these ROIs seem amazing, especially if you just take it for face value. Again, if you were an investor, right? Or if you were looking for investments and you told your potential investors, hey, I can guarantee you over a 100% return on investment per year, of course, any savvy investor would jump at that opportunity. But again, these numbers aren't exactly what they seem and you do have to dive deeper into how they're actually calculating it and if it's actually accurate, which in my opinion, not so much. So the number one car on the list that has an annualized return on investment of over 158% per year is a Volvo V90 cross country. Now the average earnings per year on the Volvo are $18,973 with an annual loan cost of $7,346. And to be quite frank, I'm so surprised to see that car 
and its earning potentials. I love Volvos. I've done videos on renting them on Turo, and it's actually got me thinking about listing it if this truly is the case that you can earn that much money on it. Now to do a little bit of post-it math, like we did in the last video for the cars that were between 10 to $25,000, on a Volvo V90, which Turo ranks the number one most profitable car on the platform in the range of $25,000 to $40,000, meaning if that's your budget to purchase, that would mean based on their numbers that the monthly payment on your Volvo is going to be about $612 and the average monthly earnings is gonna be $1,581. Now, if you do some quick simple math and you just take your monthly earnings minus your monthly car payment, that's going to leave you with a profit margin of $969. Now that sounds really, really good. And I actually think that this is one of the better cars to list on the platform because you have so much room in your margin. But here are a few things that you need to make sure that you account for when you are looking at these numbers. Now we're going to take our sort of margin of $969 and you want to account for things like insurance. You know, what is your monthly cost of insurance? Is it between $50 to $100? Any cleaning, maintenance that goes into it? Any cost of delivery if you're offering your vehicle on delivery on the platform? So those are things that you want to really sort of minus out of that initial margin that you see. So I would estimate even if you subtracted, let's say, you know, if we're going to be really generous, do a $300 per month cost on insurance and cleaning and any sort of bits and pieces that may be needed to run the business, you're still looking at a $669 margin on the car. Now, in the past, if you guys have been following me for a long time, for those of you that have or haven't, I've been hosting on the platform for over eight years. And in the past, I've talked a lot about how sometimes cars that are a little bit on the higher end, right, tend to have more margin in them. And in recent years, we have seen the market shift over to more economical cars, the cars that we saw in that 10 to $25,000 range. But if you caught my previous video, we did a breakdown of the highest earning vehicle in that category, which was, I believe, a Chevy. And it had almost a 200% return on investment. But because the overall margin on that vehicle was so low, and typically your cost of insurance and cleaning, it's gonna fall into a pretty average range. What we saw in that case was at the end of the day, when you minus out all of the additional costs that exist, then you were actually only left with maybe $200 of net, net, net margin at the end of the day. Versus with a car that's a bit more expensive like this Volvo, you have a broader range of margin to work with. So even when you minus out those costs, you're still left with a far greater profit margin at the very end of the day. Now, I love hosting cars within this realm because I truly believe that anytime your labor that you put into any car is almost exactly the same, right? Unless you're dealing with very large SUVs and minivans where it's gonna take up more time in terms of cleaning, then overall your labor cost is relatively similar. So if you can have a car that is gonna give you more output for the same amount of time, then that's definitely where you wanna go. But now the caveat of this whole list and the thing that kind of bothers me a little bit about how these lists are presented on Turo's um, data is kind of how nuanced and maybe a little inaccurate it is. Now, the estimated values on these vehicles are based off of cars between as a car being a brand new 2024 model to being a pre-owned 2018 model, meaning they took the average price between that range, between being brand new and being a pre-owned 2018. Now, also on top of that, they don't actually specify whether or not their cut of the money is being deducted from these totals. Now, as many of you might know, as hosts, we do give Turo a cut of our day rates, meaning they take anywhere between 10 to 40% based on whatever host protection plan you're on. So that could take another chunk out of the money. If anyone has any clarification to that, do let me know, but I could not find it in their literature anywhere. And then finally, they are assuming an eight and a half percent 
interest rate on a 60 month loan. Well, if you've been staying up to date with what's happening in the car market, then we know that they are taking the average of a used vehicle and applying an eight and a half percent APR. But interest rates since have really skyrocketed, especially on used cars. Now you're seeing interest rates in the 10, 11, 12, 13, and depending on your credit, way above that 14, 15% range, which of course is going to drive up your payment. So there are a lot of little nuances here that are not necessarily accurate in taking on these annualized return on investment percentages. So like on that Volvo, you know, they mentioned it's 158% return on investment, but it's likely going to be less than that once you take in all these other factors into account. Now, my favorite thing to do is to sort of fact check. You know, I'm a very data driven person and I want to make sure that if what I'm looking at, especially if I'm thinking of listing a Volvo V90 cross country because the return on investment is so great is, well, how accurate is it? So I like to actually go onto the web and search for the car that they are describing to see if it's actually for sale and if I can actually acquire it at the estimated value. And it is amazing to see the results. So let's take a look at edmunds.com to see what we find. Okay, so Turo estimated the value of a Volvo V90 that can bring in that much of a return on investment at about $33,100, just slightly above that. So I like to go into the car market and see, can we actually find that car? Does it actually even exist in the market to make this a viable business decision? So if we go in here, I'm just gonna go into Edmunds and I'm going to adjust the years because Turo says they are taking average between 2018 to 2024. So we're just gonna change out the years and they are saying that it has a value of about $33,100. So I'm just going to open up this range just to see can we actually find a Volvo that is available within that year, make, and model, and range that Turo is describing. So if we look here on Edmunds, we can see, um, let's see, anything close to 33,000 is what we're looking for. So I see one here, it's a 2018, and it's about valued at 33,590 with 50,000 miles on it. So that's actually not bad. It's very close to what Turo is describing, which then gives us some more data points that this is actually could potentially be a viable model. Now, yes, it does have 50,000 plus miles on it, and I'm not personally a fan of listing cars that have too many miles on it, because then you open yourself up to the variable expense of maintenance that you can't always account for and that could really chip away at your margins. But let's see if there's anything else that will fall within that range. Now, mostly what we're seeing here is that they are priced far above that. Um, here we are seeing a Volvo XC40, so that's a little bit different, and you would actually have to go into your market to see if a Volvo XC40, which is uh, much cheaper than the 90, the V90, will kind of bring in some sort of similar results as to the V90. So as you look at this information, I think there are two things that you can do that are extremely important. Number one, you wanna verify that you can, in fact, find the vehicle that the data is describing actually available for sale in your area and that the annual cost of ownership or the monthly payment matches up to what Turo is suggesting or at least somewhat in the realm. And then number two, the thing that you always, always wanna do no matter what is do your market research. Now I have an entire program that will walk you through how to do that market research available at powerhost.club and that's gonna show you how to actually go in your area because what might be true for a market in, let's say Miami, could be completely different for a market in, let's say New York. You know, it really varies based on the markets that you're in to see which cars are actually going to perform. So you will have to take the time out and do a little bit of homework in your specific area to see, okay, well, if based on the national averages, these cars are performing, can they actually work in my market? So you have to go figure out, are these cars even listed? What type of day rate? 
great are they fetching? How frequently are they being rented out? And this is all stuff that you can find out via market research. All right, so I want you guys to tune in to part three, which will be dropping. And again, we will be going over cars that are a little bit more so in the luxury range and with a higher budget of $40,000 to $100,000, the top performing vehicles on Turo as of 2023 based on national average data. Stay tuned and check that out.